So in our first video, we took a look at how you could take a Google Form and Google Sheets to create a fancy reading log. So for those of you who missed it, here's the brief version of what we did. So students come along, they choose their name, they enter the book title, the book author, and the type of book, and they hit submit. As a teacher, I get this giant sheet of data that looks like this, which is nice, but not super helpful. So in our previous video, what we actually did is we used some formulas so that each student ends up with a separate tab. So you can easily track a student's progress based on the data that they had entered into their Google form. Now, this is awesome. You can track it as a teacher. You could print these out at any time. But let's say your kids have Google accounts like ours do, and you'd like to actually be able to share only their tab with them. So for example, this particular tab of data, Michael's data, could be shared in a sheet to him. Well, unfortunately, Google doesn't let you share individual tabs real easily, but you can take advantage of a little formula that will do it for you. And so the formula that we're actually gonna look at today is the second one. So here's the first one that we used in the first video. The second one is this import range formula. So here's how it works. So we use Michael as our example. So here's Michael's sheet. I'd like to be able to share this with him so that he can view it at any time. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna create an entirely new Google spreadsheet. So here's my Google spreadsheet. And one thing that you could certainly do is you could just copy and paste this data, but then the data is static. It's not live, it's not real time. If he goes in and adds, adds a book to his reading log, it's not gonna automatically show up for him. So what we're actually gonna do in this spreadsheet, so we're gonna change its name first of all to say Michael's reading log, and I'll put the school year. And up here at the top in A1, I'm gonna use this formula. I'm gonna say equals import range, and so then it automatically brings up the beginning of a parentheses for me. And so what I need to do is I need to tell it what Google Sheet do I want to import data from. So I'm actually going to go to the reading log sheet that has all of the student tabs there. So I'm going to go up to the top and just copy the URL. So I've copied it. I'm going to go back to the reading log. And in quotation marks, I'm actually going to put in the URL. So that's the first thing that I need to do. Now, if I look back at my little formula that I typed out, so there's the URL, the second thing I need to do is put a comma and then tell it what sheet to actually look for. So I want it to look for the sheet titled Michael Reading Log, and then I have to put an exclamation point and then what cell range to look at. So let me go back here to my sheet. So I have to put in the comma, then I have to tell it the name of the sheet. And for those of you that aren't super familiar with Google Sheets, it's just coming from right here, like the actual name, Michael Reading Log. So I'm actually going to put that right here. So Michael Reading Log. And if I look back at my formula, the next thing is an exclamation point. So we go exclamation point. And then the cell range. So I want cell range A1 through H. And where is that? Where am I getting that from? Well, if I look here, I want the data to come from here. And I want, and I'm just gonna put H in because I, I don't know how many rows down he's gonna need it. He could read 100 books, he could read 200 books. So I'm just gonna put H. And so it'll take everything from one through anything that can be found in column H. So H, and now what I need to do is close it up and then hit return. And so the first time you do this, you might get a little reference error. And if you click on it, it'll say, you need to connect these sheets. So you just have to say, allow access and now the data comes over. Now, one thing that you may notice, if those of you with a keen eye, is that the formatting didn't come over. It's literally just the data. So in this one, I have it all pretty with, you know, like I've bolded the names, put in this little uh, fill in the background to make it easy to read. So I do have to repeat that over here. So I would just, you know, highlight these cells, bold the name, you know, change the font. Same thing here, I can change the background. So just like I did before, get it all prettied up. And then now I can hit share and I can share this with the student. So here it is. Now one thing I want to do is rather than giving him editing rights, because that means he can change the formula, and if he's smart, he can actually see other kids' data by changing the formula, I'm just going to give him viewing rights, because I don't want him to really change anything here, I just want him to see it. And then I can click send, and now that's been shared with him. And just to prove that this is live, if I go back here to Mr. Wood's reading log, let me go to the student view and I put in Michael, new book, I'll just put new author, maybe 
Okay, so it's a picture book and I hit submit. We should see this data show up on his reading log. And there it is, Michael, new book, new author, picture, and the total automatically updated for him. All right, uh, let me know if you have any questions. And just like before, I'll put the text of this formula um, in the comment section of the video so that you can find it real easily in case you forget.